What's cooking sapiens? Welcome back to the channel. Now, I am officially a final year MBBA student in Norway and obviously it brings about a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress to most students. Uh, well, I can't first of all believe that it's been more than five years since I started studying medicine and now, and now I'm officially so close to the finish line. So, today I'll be talking about how exactly do I plan on going about this final year when it comes to studying because I've also had a gap semester, right? Eight months of med school. So now it's even more important that I get back into my study regime or routine. So before we get into how exactly will I be studying, let's talk about how final year is organized here in Norway. So in the third year of medical school here, we had two major subjects surgery and internal medicine so in your final year we get a lot of repetition from these subjects right and then on top of that we also have quite a few new subjects which we haven't had before like anesthesiology emergency medicine oncology hematology etc and now i know some basics about these subjects but now it's getting now we're getting into much more detailed so that's how our final year is basically sort of organized let's talk about the exams so in the final year we have three main exams one written which is called the state exam and it's basically the same exam for all medical students in norway in every single city it's a written exam i think it's like 140 questions of multiple choice and then the second exam is the oski exam and this is the exam which most students even dream about they get nightmares because you know Oskis are just freaking horrible man it's a it's a pressure test that's what it is it's not a medical test it's a pressure test you have 10 stations seven minutes per station and you have to go in and solve the case or show some skills like you know breaking bad news for example to a patient sitting over there so it's basically like practical stuff you have to do and then we have the third exam which is the clinical exam it's a viva so you have four rooms with four different patients and you get around half an hour per station so you go into one room and you have to speak to the patient and then tell the examiner or the doctor the consultant uh, on what you plan on doing okay i want an ecg i want this i want those lab tests i want the ct scan i want the mri scan and this is the diagnosis and how and, and this is how i'll be treating that my, my patient that's gonna be a big 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 a massive exam season so i'm sort of looking forward to it as well which i will come back to later but i believe that the biggest challenge that's gonna be in this final year is to limit my learning because you know medicine is just a freaking sea it's an ocean of knowledge and you can literally go infinity depth <laughs> into every single topic so you need to learn how to limit yourself that's a big challenge for many students including me so let's now talk about how exactly will i be studying now i'll be dividing this video into three parts according to the exams so first of all how do i study for the state exam secondly how do i plan on breaking or cracking the clinical exam and the oski number one let's talk about the state exam first so by now we all know that active recall is the way to go it's the way to live your life right because if you want information in your brain to be stored in your long-term memory then you have to be consistently testing yourself upon that so what i'm going to be doing now this year is that i'm going to be doing past paper questions basically the past state exams as early as possible and now i think it's week three of med school of my final year and i've already started doing these past papers even though my exams are in next july or next june so i've already started doing the past papers of these state exams and this serves basically three purposes number one the way i do these exams is that i sit down and i do at least like 10 to 15 questions from a previous state exam, state exam every single day and then this is the important part. I note down all the questions or all the topics um, that I got wrong on the exam. So let's say I'm doing a question from the orthopedics section and if I get wrong question number one, then I will write down in, in the document, I will write down the correct answer or the information related to that very concept which I got wrong. And this is very, very important because now I get a better understanding of my weak points what exactly is it that i need to work more on not more on but more on the second reason why this helps so much is because i can really improve on my weak points but because obviously if you want to improve your weak points then you have to identify them first right and identify them by 
writing them down and then I improve my weak points by let's say reading up on that topic which I answered wrong on the past paper straight exam. That's the second purpose and this third purpose is that, purpose is that it sort of also boosts your confidence early in your final year because you know it's full of anxiety and stress and you have to be doing anything that will help you come over that uh, stress barrier. So when you get certain answers right right even though you get a lot of questions wrong as well but when you do get certain questions right it also boosts your confidence to a certain level um, because let's say <laughs> if I'm getting five questions wrong but also five questions right yes I will be worried about those five questions that I got wrong but at the same time I'll be thinking oh well I still have one more year to go when I already answered five questions correctly so that's a huge boost to my confidence i can crack this exam this is gonna be fine i can do this so the first way i do active recall is by doing past paper straight exams the second way i do active recall is by creating notion questions by using the toggle feature because this is very important right you have to be testing yourself okay so let me just break down how exactly do i study so on this side i have some notes from a uh, previous student who is now a doctor so he has he has been kind enough to share his notes with us so here i have the notes here i have the lecture pdf or the powerpoint that the professor has given us and over here i have the app notion uh, which which i'm using to make questions and notes along the way so i am mainly reading these notes and seeing if the lecture pdf matches with the notes and then making these questions using the toggle feature and then once i write the question I hide the answer, I take the screenshot from the notes and hide that under this uh, with the toggle features. The next time I repeat these questions, I can just go over the questions and try and answer that myself and then click on the toggle, the arrow and the answer will pop up and this way I can actively recall all the freaking time. And then thirdly, there are also a lot of subjects which are not going to be repeated in our final year. For example, neurology, for example, ENT, ophthalmology, pathology, oops and gyne, psychiatry. And now we as students are responsible ourselves to be repeating these and preparing ourselves on these subjects, which are not going to be taught in the final year because we have had them in the fourth year or in the fifth year. So how do we plan on repeating these subjects? Because obviously with time, when you don't repeat stuff, you do forget a lot. So what I've done previously is that, let's say when I was in my fourth year in, in, and in my fifth year and I was having neurology, Yubsangaini, ENT, ophthalmology, I was consistently making mind maps for every single topic in these subjects. So I know that I have a mind map already prepared for, let's say, dis certain diseases in ENT or certain diseases in neurology. So what I'm going to be doing is that I'm going to be refreshing my memory and refreshing the, 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 the curriculum by going through these really concise and short mind maps to see that if I really still understand the basic picture, the overall view or the overall concept of a certain topic. So once I've refreshed all these topics by going through the mind maps, then I will try and answer the toggle questions which I made for these topics in the past two years, let's say when I was in my fourth or fifth year, for example. Uh, and that's how I'm going to be testing myself. So active recall is basically going to be in two parts. Number one, doing past paper questions and also, also, you know, automatically revising all these subjects. And secondly, targeting each subject specifically by doing the toggle questions that I made for each topic in the third year, fourth year and fifth year. And that's how I'm going to be basically living, dreaming and thinking about Active Recall 24-7 in my final year. And now let's talk about the OSCE exam, the OSCE, OSCE, OSCE. And for those of you guys who don't know what an OSCE exam is, it's basically a structured clinical exam. So you have different stations with different cases and seven minutes per station. And you have seven minutes to really solve the case. Um, and it's more, there's, there's a lot more focus on practical skills in these cases. Let's say you go into a room and then you see a patient lying on the floor and then you have to do the emergency medicine formula, the A, B, C, D, E or the, you know, uh, HLR, not HLR, HLR is in Norwegian, I mean the CPR, <laughs> CPR. So it's, a, it's sort of a test of your practical skills um, uh, in med school. OSCE exam, honestly, I haven't really started preparing for that because it's more like a, it's more like teamwork. When you practice for an OSCE, you have to be studying with your study group or with your friends. So I will probably gonna do this in the second semester of my final year. And um, yeah, I'm probably gonna just leave it to that and uh, have tons and tons of colloquiums and study sessions with my group, with my friends. 
and practice all these clinical skills on each other uh, in the second semester. So I'll leave that to later. That's not my basic headache right now. Right now, I just want to be revising all the curriculum. The third exam is the clinical viva, right? You go into a room, you get a patient, and you have to basically do everything from A to Z, talk to the patient, take up the history, and then explain to the examiner what you want to do with the patient, how you would treat him, and the medications and everything, right? So I am not too worried about that because, you know, in Norway, in the fifth year, we get our sort of student license, and we can start working as a student doctor. So you get I have already practiced that tons of times by working as a student doctor previously, which I still do, by the way. Uh, so I'm not really worried about that at all, because if you are, if you sort of are good at your clinical skills based on the OSCE and you know your theory based on the state exam, which is written, then this clinical viva should not be a problem for you at all. So I'm pretty much not worried about this exam. Um, if I prepare for the state exam and the OSCE exam well, I've automatically also prepared for the clinical viva. So to sum it all up, I'm gonna be doing tons and tons of active recall by doing tons and tons of past papers and all these previous state exams and also noting down my weak points and the questions or the concepts that I get wrong along the way in order to really improve on my weak points. So I know a lot of students really stress out, really get anxious in their final year and the way I think about this is that it's just gonna be fun, you know. If I wasn't capable of passing my final year, I would not have passed the previous five years either. So I know I'm capable, I have full faith in myself and this is not overconfidence guys. Overconfidence confidence is when you have so much faith in yourself that you stop putting in the work. I'm still putting in the work obviously, but I also know that I am completely capable of passing these exams and it's just gonna be fun, you know, I get to show to the examinators, to the consultants what I know and how good of a fresh junior doctor I can so be. Wrap for today's sapiens if you have any questions then just comment down below and I'll try to answer every single one of them and uh, yeah before you leave just kiss the subscribe button I'll see you guys in the next video take care peace